Hello and welcome to my ninth Blitz 3D tutorial, and in this tutorial I will cover if statements. And yeah, so let's get started. And as you can see here, I've just created a basic program, except I positioned my camera 10 axis back on the 10 degrees back on the Z axis, so we could actually see something. And you'll see why I needed that in a while. And so for statements are a very big part of game programming, and they work using an array. And an array creates multiple copies of one object and positions them at intervals that we specify. So instead of, just an example, instead of writing cube equals create cube 100 times if we needed like 100 cubes in our game, we could just replace that with a small convenient for statement to make our cubes and position them at intervals away from each other. And it's a very big part of game programming, so let's get started. Uh, a for statement always starts with for and ends with next. And right here, the condition for the for statement. Now here, this, I'm just going to type the code and then explain it. X equals one, two, let's say five. So what this says, it says that we find the variable x and it sets the value of x. Now, really, a for statement loops through the code that we put here the number of times that this variable goes to that one. And each single time it loops through, the value of x changes from one to two to three to four and then finally to five. So this just creates five instances. One, comma, two, comma, three, comma, four, comma, five. Five instances, and each single time it loops through, x changes, x changes its value according to this loop. And really, it doesn't have to start from one to something. It can really go uh, anywhere, basically. It can, it's just a range. We can do from negative three to three to change the value of degrees. So this is on the left side, but on the right side, it's basically just any range that you want to have. And let's just leave it at negative 3 to 3, and that's actually seven, seven copies of our code there, because it's negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1, 2, and 3. So it's seven instances because it includes 0 if you have a negative variable. So, yeah. That's before a for statement is a looping statement, meaning that it loops through a code a specified number of times. And this, I'll just show you an example. So let's just create a cube. Create cube. And here, let's position the cube. And when we position the cube, if we want them to have, at, if we want the cubes to be positioned at intervals, we will have to use the x variable. And I'll show you how to implement the x variable on positioning the cube. Let's just put on the x-axis, let's just put x, our variable x, comma 0, comma 0. So each single time it loops through, it creates a uh, cube with the x value of our x variable. So first it positions the cube at negative 3 on the x, then negative 2, negative 1, 0, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how it works. So it positions each cube one degree apart from each other. From negative 3 to negative 2 to negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So let's just test this program and run that. Here we go. We have just a straight line of cubes or rectangles since they were positioned exactly next to each other. And to fix this, we will have to change the value of x to x times 2 to just to make them apart times 2. And the operators in Blitz 3D, pretty basic, I guess. I just, I'll just cover them quickly. Sorry about that. Just minus, plus, subtraction and addition variables, asterisk, multiplication variable, and slash division variable. And there's also the modulus variable, which is percent. And yeah. So those were the operators, and let's just run this test program now. It's supposed to be much better. 
and we still have a straight line of cubes. I think I know how to fix this. Let's just scale our cubes exactly one half. And since we're not, let's just scale and to t cube, comma 0 0.5, comma 0 0.5, comma 0 0.5. And now what that does is just going to scale cubes exactly on all our cubes on exactly one half, and we don't use the x variable, so all of the cubes will be scaled to one half. So there we go. We have our straight row of seven cubes, position from negative three on the x all the way to three on the x. So that was good. And really just play around with it. We can implement the x variable here. So it would just like decrease on 0 0.5 each single time on the x. There's really a lot of stuff you can do here. So sky's your limit. So yeah, and just for showing you a new command. Oh yeah, and before I go there, I just want to say that obviously the for statement only works because of the assignment of the variable x as it loops through this. And that's basically the basis, since the value of x changes each single time it loops through and creates a new cube. That's the basis of the for statement. So if you understand that, you can go through for statements easily. And just to add a small twist to this, I'm just going to teach you a new command. And it's a random command, rand. And what the random command does is, for instance, if we put, uh, there's two, it takes two values, the minimum value and the maximum value. This would return a random number from 0 to 100. Absolutely random. So we can just create a variable num equals that changes the value of that. So there's really a lot of stuff you can do. And rand takes two values. There's also rnd, which just returns a random value from 0 to 50, and there's seed, RND, which is a completely random number. Returns a completely random number, unlike this, that takes a range, and unlike this, that just has a number, it returns a completely random number that's really strange, usually. I suggest using these for your games, but if you really need a, some kind of really random number, then use seed RND. I'll explain those more in depth later. That's just a quick reference. So let's use the RAND command. And let's color our cube randomly each single time it loops through. So we're going to have seven different colored cubes. So let's just say NTT color cube, comma, brand, 0, comma, 255. And as we know, it'll find the ma maximum value is 255 and the minimum value is 0. So it, and as we know, in each single value, red, green, and blue has the maximum of 255 units zero units. So that's just going to be really easy. And I'm just going to copy and cut here because I'm just too lazy, I guess. <laughs> and copying and cutting will be your friend with code. So trust me on that. And there we go. So each single time it's going to loop through, it's going to create a random value for a random color for our cube from that. And let's see, entity does not exist. And that is because I am an idiot and I did not pay attention here. We actually implemented that code before we even created the cube. So after you create the cube, use the variable name cube. That matters. So don't be like me and make sure you don't make dumb mistakes like that. So let's run our program now. Here we have seven different colored cubes. Now really just play around with this. It's really fun to play around with. If we want to make stairs, for instance, we would position them on, we would put the x variable on both y and x values. Instead of putting x times 1, just, just x. So each single time it would position that 1 degree apart on the x and 1 degree up on the y to create kind of a stair effect. There we go. We have our seven cubes displayed here. Well, just play around with it. It's fun, and, uh, yeah. So, this was basically it on four statements. They're really handy and useful, so just use them and play around with it a bit until you get the powerful, until you get how powerful they are.
and then just continue on to my next tutorial. Thanks for watching, and see ya.